Hello, hi gang. How you doing? This is Heather Biederman and I am streaming live on Facebook for Freedom Revolution Network and we are in the middle of a stay at place, stay at home, whatever they call it in Minnesota. Our governor has issued that we need to all hang tight, lay low, stay in our place. And it's working okay so far, but I know a lot of people are having arguments about it. Um, one of the things I'm going to just make sure, I'm going to make sure that it's showing up on my page. So I'm going to go right there right now and we're going to take care of things for you. I hope you're doing really good. Let's see if I click on it and I can share it to my page. There I am. And it's muted. So thank goodness. Let's see. Where do I click? Clicky click. That's the only bad thing. It's on the watch party. There I am. You hear me? That was me. So I'm going to just share it to Liberty Librarian. So if you're looking from there, then I can get you there. Share in a group. Oh, that's not a group. Oh, Heather, you and your silliness. It's a page, silly woman. So yeah, this has been a kind of exciting week. Um, we are scrambling at my library job to get everything all happy and ready for uh, the beginning of the semester which is starting again next uh, week on Monday um, and going from being a uh, uh, physical campus to being all online. So I'm trying to update my web pages and I have all these videos and things have been going great, but I think I should be good by tomorrow. I am just convincing myself that life will be good. Liberty Librarian is live, kids. Okay. There we go. I see one person's watching. Hello. Is it working? Oh, I, I do it for you guys. You know, even during this, sometimes you feel like you have no energy and that things are rough, but it's worth it. You know, every once in a while I get a good conversation going with somebody who watches the show and they tell me, hey, I was thinking about what you said. There's a lot going on in the world. I'm like, yes, there is. I'm going to share to my own page. And that should be good. Oh, I don't want to share to a page. I share to my share my timeline. How's that sound? Okay, here we go. All of the fun to do is done. So I will get out of that. I hope that um, you know, like I do um, the Sweet Subversive show on Wednesdays, and we have a pretty good time. But this is my serious show. So as much as I want it to be not serious today so much, um, I, I know that um, there's a couple things I wanted to talk to you about. Um, the first thing um, news related is that our state is tracking people. And they, they aren't even like going kind of, they're totally tracking people. And this is, is like Minnesota obviously has, um, the United States is every, government in the world. If you have GPS on your own little phone, I'm going to grab my phone as a, um, as a guide. If you have it on your phone and there's GPS turned on, um, you have tracking apps, you have social media that follows you for what you do. Um, let me tell you, I'm not even going to lie. They are tracking the heck out of you. Um, what are they using it for right now during the um, shelter in place, the stay at home, as they call it here in Minnesota? Um, They're using it to figure out how many people are in areas when they shouldn't be. Um, they're using it to see if social distancing, distancing is being practiced. And social distancing, as you know, is the six foot radius out. Um, you shouldn't be too close to people because you could catch a virus, uh, coronavirus, right? Um, they also are talking about um, how uh, they could pot potentially use it to see if there are a lot of people out after if they in, have in, enforced a curfew, which you haven't yet. Um, they are in our state looking at it as um, the police um, are, are going to approach us as educational moments. So that way, if they see a group of people out, they will go, you know, this is why we ask you to, so you don't get sick, so you don't get your grandma sick, so you don't get other people sick. No one wants this. Um, 
everyone who I talk to seems to think it's going to be someone else that's going to get sick. But I think you need to open yourself to the possibility that you are probably going to get this. Um, I'd say the majority of people are going to get it. Um, will you be hospitalized? I don't know. Um, if you do, it's going to be not fun. And if you start having symptoms where it's getting to be painful, go in right away. Um, some of the people who have the lung symptoms have to be intubated and it is not fun. I've had family members intubated it is not the most fun thing, but sometimes if you have lung conditions, these are things that you need to do. So I've had fights with people lately because they don't want to hear it. I think we're getting inundated with it from all media. Um, and I think the reason for that is because a lot of people don't believe in anything. And, you know, we've been lied to and we've had people tell us, oh, it's okay when things were not okay. So who do you believe? And my, my big beef is, you know, they tell you that um, there's no cure, there's no vaccine, there's nothing, and they won't do testing, there won't be enough testing. Um, and yet, at the same time, if there's alternative methods of um, preventing illness or even treating it, um, it's shot down. In our new media of the world, there um, is no room for alternative methods of healing. And I think that's a shame because I've been turning to that a lot because I feel like I look at my Facebook posts from the years past and I see every year at this time of year, like clockwork, I get really, really sick. And I think it's a combination of some of my allergies. I like mold and dust allergies, super fun. But um, also spring is in the air and you've been inside with everyone. But I mean, bless you people who have allergies right now. If you even sneeze in front of someone, you look like uh, public enemy number one, right? So my own um, research lately, I've been working on um, just supplements that will help um, boost your immune system. And um, I, I've i worked out a system of antiviral as well, um, mostly because in the past I've had shingles. And shingles is super not fun, especially for a young person who's never really experienced that level of weird pain. But um, neuropathy is a pain that is deep inside, um, I'd say it's kind of in your muscles, but it's kind of in, in like deeper. And, um, you know, they always say for pain, you take like ibuprofen, take the Tylenol. And this is a kind of pain that drugs don't touch. Um, and, and it's tied to a virus, which is like a herpes virus actually. And I became fascinated about ways to prevent it from coming back because once you have it you never want it again just like any kind of virus you don't want it so for me um, when I start feeling illness I, I assume that it's probably um, you know the flu first of all and if it is I, I, I do get a flu shot I know a lot of people who don't believe it because there's really not so great preservatives in it some people say poisonous um, I, I do it because I know I get sick and I, and this is my big worry with this is I don't want to get the coronavirus. I don't want to be in a hospital. I don't want to be in critical care. I don't want to be one of those people where they're um, if they do get overwhelmed and they will um, do they decide if that person lives or doesn't. And so I'm doing everything in my power to try to find a way to um, boost my system enough and I may get it at home and I'm hoping that's the way it would go is if I get sick at home I can keep it here and not go out and I haven't gotten sick yet but I'm I know it's just a matter of time right so what have I been doing um every day I take my normal I take uh, multivitamins every day um I have probably the most expensive pee on it, <laughs> around, but um, I take a good multivitamin. I take uh, fish oil, which helps with in inflammation. 
Um, and the thing that I've heard that's kind of confusing is different sides say um, things that help with inflammation don't help as much with coronavirus. But then I've seen other doctors go, no, that's BS. It totally helps. Everything helps. Um, you don't want to get inflammation because it will um, set like a like the virus in motion for replication because your body's weakened. So you want to have a strong immune system, no matter what, because the stronger your immune system, the better your response is going to be. And it's going to be quicker to um, pick apart the virus that's replicating inside your body. So I do like my normal, my normal everyday thing is um, like the vitamins, the multivitamins, the um, I take a fiber supplement, which um, I think, you know, having things move regularly through your system is good. You're not getting any stoppages because anything that's not running smoothly could cause inflammation. Um, other things that I do, um, I make sure that I get a little extra vitamin C. I've been trying a, um, gosh, it, what's it called? Um, my friend Alicia had told me about, um, I'm going to look up the, what is it called? It's um, a allerg what is it called it's an alert it's thing for allergies it's like a natural supplement for allergies i'm looking it up right now let's see if i can find it um it's called organs wild harvest allerade and it's got quer quercetin however you say that in there and they also have a, a pretty um strong dose of vitamin c which i really recommend if you have nothing else in your vitamins um vitamin c right now is very helpful um i've seen some posts about people doing ivs of vitamin c which i think is a little extreme unless you have a really um a good relationship with a natural health provider who understands your system and your body. And I wouldn't just do it out of the blue because I think um, th there's toxic levels of vitamin C and um, everything that you can take, you can take too much of it and it can hurt you. Um, what I'm looking for is balance, a gentle balance in your health that will make it so you can, you can uh, process anything that comes your way and you will be healthy. Um, so anyway, that's a really good one because it has those supplements that I think help with um, not only my allergies, but um, inflammation and the way my body um, reacts to the environment. So um, I'm not already getting reduced because I have allergies. I'm stronger. It's building up strength in my body. Um, another thing that I've been switching to is an... Um, an olive leaf extract, which I've had really good luck with. Um, I did this with the shingles and I think this has been helping. I felt the little tickle earlier, yeah, like just a day or so ago. And I, you know, I, I started doing that. I do garlic supplements. I make sure, um, God, what else is there? I have uh, the garlic supplements every day. I always, in the morning I take a D3 um, supplement. And I just do that regularly because I live in Minnesota. It's winter and there's not enough sunlight in my body. And I get real strong effects of, um, uh, what do you call it? Seasonal affective disorder. And having a little extra vitamin D is good. I've heard people say, oh, you could get jaundiced and that, but I'm really not hitting it at that high of a level. I do a green drink every day. I think having lots of healthy greens in your diet, um, especially with things that have like chlorophyll, chlor chlorophyll, chlorophyll. Yes, yeah, so I was thinking chloroform, like when it knocks you out. Like, no, not that. Um, but green stuff, lots of green stuff in your diet. Um, make sure you're, if you're not um, drinking a, a green juice every day, that you're um, getting your full load of um, vitamin rich foods. And Yes, I eat meat, but I also think um, a little protein is good. It keeps you strong. But I think if you had to choose one or the other, vegetarian is the healthiest way to go. I am not a vegetarian, but I still know it in my heart that um, you should probably be eating 70 to 80% of your food as uh, vegetables in some way. And it will be healthier for you and your body will process it better. But I do think there's rooms for healthy fats, which can also be vegetables. So um, if you do get sick, please consider if there's ways to make it so you can have soup, um, something with lots of um, fresh vegetables in it, or even frozen is good. You know, um, 
be ready to um, have something easy. I know a lot of people have been cooking and making lots of soups and um, easy things to eat in case they get sick. That's very smart. It's good to have easy things, but um, you know, like we're, if you watch our show last night, Doritos is not the easy, good way that you should be going to have that. Um, you really need to um, keep working on um, building up your system. And if you start getting sick, um, eating is going to help heal your body and you want to not have to deal with that. So especially if you're living on your own, um, make sure you have enough food um, that you can easily put something together for at least a week until you can get more, get help. But I would say, you know, plan on the next few weeks, even next month, next couple of months. Um, it could go that far where you may need to be self-sufficient. Um, if, if you get to the point where you can't get up to eat, you need to call someone immediately and get help. Um, one thing that my um, friend Kara had talked about last night, and I'm going to be making um, a little sign that talks about it is um, do a, do a friend tree, people in your life, neighbors, people that um, you care about, um, call them, contact them online you know, get a response, make sure that you're hearing that they're okay. If, if they need anything, say, I'm here for you. Do you need me to go bring you anything? You know, are you out of stuff? I can help you find it. If, even if like you can't go and buy stuff and bring it to them. Um, the fact that you care enough about them is super important right now. And that's like having this where you can reach out to people and talk to them is very important. Okay. Before I get derailed, um, the last couple things for, um, watching for your health, natural solutions that I think really do help me. Um, I believe in colloidal silver. Um, I know a lot of people are like, oh, you know, like this, what's his name on the, the preacher on TV? He's selling it and for super expensive. Um, some people make it for their own. Um, I use a brand called Sovereign Silver and I've had really good luck with it. Um, I use it for... Um, I, I've uh, used it for like under the, what do you call it? Sublingual, sublingual. Um, it's under the tongue. Um, you put a few drops under there. When you start feeling a little scratchy throat, um, start not feeling right, a little bit of that. And it, it helps clear things up. A lot of um, illnesses start throat, in the nose, um, through the eyes. Um, some people say through the ears. So um, I've done when I've had like a little bit of earache, I've done like a little few drops in the ears, like let's sit for a bit, do the other ear. Um, if I've had, I get allergic conjunctivitis, I've done drops in my eyes, but that's gotta be real careful with the eyes are very sensitive. There's um, nasal spray with colloidal silver. Um, so can you turn blue it you really have to be drinking like gallons of it um and every day and i'd say like just a little bit under your tongue as needed um especially if you start feeling sick a little more than that it's going to take a long time especially if you have something like sovereign silver has teeny little particles of silver um it would take a lot lot more of that to to turn your skin blue and that's the thing they always say so people get freaked out and worried so don't freak out and worry it's that's not worth it um i do think colloidal silver is something good to have on hand um you know and even if you don't use it and take it internally which i'm fine that's fine you don't have to um i found for cuts it's really good for disinfecting cuts. Um, I know some people who use it as a cleaning treatment um, because it kills both bacterial um, substances and uh, viruses. So um, just about as good as bleach. So um, silver has been around for a long time. Uh, I would recommend that highly. The last thing I wanna recommend is elderberry syrup which I think is tasty anyway, but I have a, a lady called the Elderberry Queen who I might post a link to. Um, she's probably super busy right now. Um, she makes the most delicious elderberry syrup and I'd say um, kid approved all the way. It has, um, I think it has organic, I mean, organic everything in it, but organic um, apple cider vinegar, which you don't really taste the vinegar part. It's got some like natural honey in it, um, raw honey. 
It's got, I think, cinnamon in it and elderberry syrup. And elderberries are sambucol, I think, is the substance that they use. They can make, um, it's like a cough syrup, natural cough suppressant that um, also is antibacterial, antifungal, and uh, really good in general. And it tastes good. So um, this during this time, I've been doing a little swig of that um, in the morning and at night. If you get really sick, you can do it if, like it helps like with your throat, but I'd say you do that a few times a day and you, you should be pretty good. It, it's also got vitamins in it, so it can't hurt. Um, a lot of people give it to their kids and I'd say it's a good one. It's kind of sweet because there's the honey in it and that sugar content, but uh, honey is great. And you could just do a spoonful of raw honey um, as a, instead of cough syrup or cough drops, it's a great natural it coats. So if you start getting coughing, it's good. Um, and I've, I've read up about fever reducers. Um, there's opposite sides. Some people say you should only use something like Tylenol to reduce your fever. Others say, um, to stay away from, uh, ibuprofen, um, what do you call it? NASAIDs, NYSAIDs, however you say that, um, like naproxen. I, I've heard that it doesn't really matter. Um, if you are full fledged sick, it, they may tell you to stay away from them, but, um, at an early, in an early stage, I don't think it'll matter as much. You want to keep your fever down. Having a high fever, um, burns up your brain cells. It makes things go wrong. Um, so you, you want to take care of yourself. And I feel like this episode is me just going, you know, these are things I think about. You want to go around, um, you want to clean your door knobs, clean, clean around your mailbox. I have this special spray that's um, kind of cool, actually. It's not bleach. It, I'm going to go grab it real quick. It's actually kind of a nice product. I assure you I'm coming back. Okay. I'm coming back. All right. So this product is called Clean Smart. It's a daily surface surface cleaner. It kills 99.9% of viruses and bacteria. And it leaves no chemical residue. Breaks down to a saline solution. Let's see if we can see it. Clean Smart. And I checked lately and it's not on Amazon right now. But um, they sell it in different sizes. And it smells just vaguely kind of like bleach, but I go around and I clean anyway. They said that um, ammonia like Windex actually works fine too. Um, maybe not quite as great as bleach, but you can't find it anywhere. So I have this, I've been going around, I clean all of like the surfaces that we touch. I go outside and I, I do the door handles. I try to make sure like the garbage cans go around the the sinks and the bathroom and you know it's good just to be thoughtful about your space especially if you're going to be inside a lot um if you do have a virus on you it's good to anytime you come into your house to wash your hands right i mean this is just like common sense stuff but i feel like it needs to be said and i also think you know once you take care of your insides you take care of your brain make sure you're doing things every day like reaching out to people um, that you care about, talk to people that you know your friends with, the people, your neighbors, your coworkers, and see how they're doing. Try to help each other out. Um, this is seriously the 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 most disruptive, um, terrifying in a lot of ways um, time that I can remember in a long time, and I think we need each other to help get through this. So. I want you to know that um, I'm thinking about you and I want you to, if you need someone to reach out to, you can send me a note on Facebook and I will be happy to talk to you. I know we're all going through a lot right now and our, our problems, our, what used to be normal problems aren't feeling that normal anymore, but we can do our best to help each other. So reach out to 10 people, put, write a list down. That's your assignment. Write a list of 10 people that you care about, um, people that you worry about for being alone, um, and every week check on them. And hopefully people will start reaching out to you too and going, how are you doing? I heard you need a peanut butter. I saw it. Oh, how about toilet paper? They're, they had them here the other day. Um, are you, you don't have your medication. You can't drive. 
can I go pick it up for you? Can I do something? And I, or, you know, and sometimes if it's someone who's elderly or, you know, like they are sensitive to um, the virus in any way, um, you can pick up things and then put it on their door and call them and say, I just left it there. So they know that to grab it and they're not um, exposing themselves as much to the potential. So care about people, please do. Okay, so news-wise, I just wanted to talk briefly about um, tracking. Let's see, I found an article about um, how cell phones tracking in the time of coronavirus. Let's see if I can find that again. Smartphone data reveals which Americans are social distancing and which are not. Um, mobile phone industry explores worldwide tracking of users and how location data could play a role in managing the coronavirus um, crisis. So this one is on theverge.com and um, they are surveilling people in Taiwan. This was just from yesterday. Um, and what they're doing is, so last week the coronavirus marched around the world um, a growing number of governments began to explore the use of our cell phone data to monitor the outbreak. So they used location data. And in Israel, they sent alerts to citizens believed to have been exposed to the virus, ordering them to self-quarantine. In England, authorities analyzed anonymized data from telecom provider O2 to determine the extent to which the populace had implemented social distancing. And in the US, um, Google discussed sharing location data and health authorities for similar purposes. So they're using it everywhere. Mm. So this location data has been deployed to fight COVID-19. And um, the most dramatic example is in Taiwan right now, where the authorities have deployed an electronic fence around quarantine households, where um, the authorities are um, alerted the police are alerted if you walk out, um, if you leave the home or even turn off your phone. So, um, you know, a lot of people go, oh, I'll just turn it off when I go out. So if I need it, I could turn it back on. No, they, the minute you turned it off, they would show up and go, hey, your phone went off. What's up with that? That's bonkers. So I tell you people, leave your phone at home. <laughs> Leave your phone at home. If you're going to do sneaky crap, they are already following you. Um, and there are phones that can um, get around some of that, but turning it off and the fact that they are, they would call you if you, they turned off, you should be worried about that. So um, they said in uh, writers, uh, Jayan had authorities said authorities will contact or visit those who trigger an alert within 15 minutes. So they're on you. Officials will call twice a day to ensure people don't avoid tracking by leaving their phones at home. So they're checking on you, random checking. Um, privacy concerns have limited the use of location data for anti-coronavirus efforts in countries such as the United States. But as the system has drawn few complaints in Taiwan, which has reported only, which has um, reportedly only reported 108 cases of the virus compared to more than 800,900 in, in China. Um, the system's fans is, um, they, well, whose straight Ben Thompson, Thompson, who notes that by implementing what Americans might think of as dystopian surveillance measures, the fact that you have to call it dystopian uh, makes me think it is bad. Um, but they, they say that the Taiwanese citizens currently enjoy more freedoms than many Americans. They, this is what they say, quote, life here is normal. Kids are in school, restaurants are open, the grocery stores are well stocked. I would be lying if I didn't admit the rather shocking assertions of government authority and surveillance that make this possible. All of which would have been decried a few months ago. Feels pretty liberating even as is troubling. We need to talk about this. So if you're sick, they do the this dystopian, um, you're in jail. You're literally in jail in your home, um, sometimes in the hospital. You can't go. Um, you're locked down. But everyone else doesn't have to. So they're like, it's fine as long as it's not me. But when it's you, think about how that will feel. So um, we're not that far off from that. 
I, I hate to tell you, I don't want to burst your bubble, but we're, we're not even to the worst of it yet. And um, when we get there, they're going to be watching you. They're going to be locking you down. Um, and, and, you know, a lot of people go, oh, in this time of emergency, I can accept that. And I can accept a lot of things in a time of emergency. I'm in a, a like a stay at home, a shelter in place situation right now. We still have, um, you know, you can go to the grocery store, you can go to a liquor store, thank God, right? Um, you can go out, um, you can pick up some food, they can deliver. It's not that bad here. But pretend that this is like, that they aren't being big brother, you're lying to yourself. Um, we just don't have the energy to fight about it because it's too scary. And if you fight, then you are the bad guy because you want everyone to get sick. So don't, you know, I, I get it. I, I get it. But when it's all said and done, it's over. Are these things going to go away? I don't believe it. I don't believe they will. And I do think that we need to be very careful about um, giving up, um, you know, giving up any freedom, really. I mean, you should be scared. You should be scared of this because it's not a pretty thing. And it's dangerous that they have this much power. So in The Verge, they talk about in the moment, many Americans would take emergency responsive directives from Como over those of our president, who has like basically said that he'd like us to be open and regular business by Easter, which isn't going to happen, kids. Not at all. Um, they've called for isolated Americans to return back to work by Easter. And, can you, can, and he even continued today to make misleading comparisons between COVID-19 and the much dangerous, uh, less dangerous seasonal flu, which it is not the same. Increasingly calls for diminished civil liberties to confront the crisis are coming from unexpected places. Um, there's a developer behind bookmarking site Pinboard um, and a privacy activist who's been riding a variety of high horses about the dangers of permanent ubiquitous data collection since 2012. So um, this is one that caught their attention. Um, the big tech data collection is dangerous. There's a, an article that this, um, I'm not sure how to pronounce his name, Maciej, Maciej Chizowski, um he talked about, he compared the long-term storage of user data favored by technology companies to toxic waste. So it gets even worse over time, right? Dangerous, more and more dangerous to you the longer they have it. So he wrote a new piece on Monday and he argued for an Israeli style alert system that uses mobile location data to enable contact tracing and order those likely exposed to COVID-19 to self-quarantine. And he goes on to write that, of course, all of this would come at an enormous cost to our privacy, which makes me think you shouldn't do it. This is usually the point in the essay where I break out all of the old Benjamin, Ben Franklin quote, quote, those who would give up essential liberty to purchase a little temporary safety deserve neither. I like that one. But this proposal doesn't require us to give up any liberty that we didn't already sacrifice long ago. And on the altar of convenience, the terrifying surveillance infrastructure of this project requires, um, exists, requires exit, typo, and is maintained in good working order in the hands of private industry where it is entirely unregulated and is currently being used to try to sell the people skin cream. Why not use it to save lives? So it, he thinks that if they made it as a public private partnership and use it, the data to limit to a current emergency, um, he thinks it is, um, it, it's useful. He continues to believe that living in a surveillance society is incompatible in the long term with liberty, which I agree but the prerequisite of liberty is a physical safety. If temporarily conscripting surveillance capitalism as a public health measure offers us a way out of this crisis, then we should take it and make full use of it. Or are there other ways? I, I mean, I've heard people argue that maybe if we could just do have more accessible testing so we could know who actually has it, just test everyone, find out those people who are exposed, stay home. Um, go to the hospital, stay home, whatever. 
Everyone else can go back to their lives, stay clean, stay away from the people who are infected. Um, that would be a way of dealing with it without having to do surveillance. Um, I just think that spying on people to like, are you, are you around the people who are sick? Um, it, it, in some ways I can see why they would think that it would be helpful and it probably would be helpful, but we're just giving one more freedom away for safety. And I think there are other ways to do it. What do you think about that? It, it makes me nervous, honestly. So there's a ratio um, for the pandemic and it it's kind of, I mean, we're nonstop. We're gonna be hearing about coronavirus, COVID-19 over and over again. And um, there are 44,183 cases of uh, coronavirus here in the United States and um, 544 deaths. And I think that was yesterday from the news. So it's probably more than that now. And there are 21,000 cases in New York, 2,200 um, in Washington, 2,500 in California. Um, it's spreading. So please think about if, if your freedom is important to you and your privacy is important to you, is it worth giving it up now? Because I'm not sure we will ever get it back. And there isn't any any way to ensure that like if you give this up that they will go oh yeah well now that that's done well, here here we're not going to track you anymore no once you open the door for tracking it's on and it's on now um so how how do you protect yourself from tracking how to stop phone from tracking right let's see now they say that there's ways um, like you can turn off the cellular and the Wi-Fi radio on your phone. Um, you can put it in airplane mode, um, disable your GPS radio, anything with um, apps that run in the background, you turn them off, make sure they are turned off. Um, I'd say a lot of times if you can just turn off your phone, that's probably the best. Um, what is another one? Um, there are cases that can block it um there's location tracking you can turn that off um let's see there's another one i just saw where did that go too many tabs open do you have like a million tabs open like i do targeted advertising um anytime when they want to show notifications say no block it um tweak your phone's location settings so you go into location services um Click settings, privacy, location services on your phone, and then go down to system services and then significant locations to see the log record of what you've been and toggle it off. There's like an on and off, turn it off. So, and then you can go in there and clear your history, clear that history, clear your history. And then it doesn't remember. Um, another thing you can do, and that's the same for Android devices where it's de delete location history instead of clear. So that was iOS first and then Android. Um, limit ad tracking, um, ending location tracking may sound uh, extreme, but um, I want you to know that the White House met with the, the, you know, the leaders of all the big companies like Facebook, Amazon, Google, whatever, um, and they are all privy to sharing um, data tracking information. So if they can't get it off of your phone, they're getting it off of your apps. So think about that too, about where you go, because they use it to triangulate where you are. So um, even if you have your GPS turned off, if you are doing anything with apps, um, sometimes they can use um, how the information is getting to you by what tower it's coming from. And then they triangulate by, um, you know some logic there they they have computers that can figure it out um so you turn off web and app activity use a private browser on your phone so if you are um you know um there's a lot of apps for browsing the internet and that some are better than others i do like google a lot i mean i i, I totally do but um if you're worried about it, like even Firefox has an anonymous mobile web browser. So it blocks advertising, analytics, social trackers. That's, that's worth it. Um, there's Firefox Focus. 
Um, so Google mobile versions of Google's Chrome and Microsoft Edge have incognito mode and in, in private mode. So sometimes you may need to turn that on. Um, if you don't want a mobile browser that's associated with big data, um, you could use something like Dolphin browser. That's a good one. Um, for iPhone, you know, a lot of um, people use Safari browser. There's uh, stealth browsing, private browsing, um, and a lot of these phones. Um, so just think about what you're using. And um, there are a lot of options out there. Um, you check your online accounts regularly. Uh, make sure that you aren't saving and that you can turn off and there, there's privacy controls. You should go through every one of your apps and, and start to look and see what, what's being shared. Um, is it your friends list? What, what are they looking for? And if you can opt out of ads, there's actually a consumer pro choice page called opt out at opt out dot about ads dot info. And I think you can go into that and you can opt out of advertisements. It's kind of new. So check that out. There's, and if you have virtual assistants like voice control, like, hey, Google, you know, like turn that off. You know, Amazon, hey, Siri, you know, anything that processes your, your voice, you might want to turn that off. And there's things like TVs even that can be tracking you. So please, please think about all your smart devices and how it's sharing information. And then you control the permission. Um, things that have happened in California and are in like all around the world are, are starting to make privacy an issue. So just because we have illness in our world, um, don't give up your, on your privacy yet. Please don't. Okay. So let's see. There's one last thing I wanted to look at with you guys. Hmm. Intellectual freedom news. I thought there was one that I wanted to share with you today. Let me look at it. I haven't been doing so much news lately and I apologize. I know a lot of you, you're here for the news and I, um, I wanna continue that. It's quite important. It just feels like our world is all about COVID-19 right now. I don't really want it to be so much, but um, we get there. There's, um, oh, as a librarian, the cool thing is, um, Almost all the major vendors are um, for like databases, ebooks, are offering free services to um, people because so many students are at home now. So many cl online classes are um, needing access to new materials. So um, vendors are helping out by providing tons of uh, trials and free online access. Um, book list is one of my favorites as a librarian for um, trying to find out what new books to purchase for your collections. It's great. Um, I know that um, in our own libraries in Minnesota, we're working together with our, um, it's called PALS here, and they help us um, get our, it's like our library online catalog system to um, work with databases better. And so they're helping us integrate all these free resources. So it's just amazing. And they're amazing people because I don't know how I would make it all work on my own. So I am grateful. Shout out to PALS people. You are great. Um, and um, censorship, um, There, there's, um, there's always something. It seems like for a while there, all everyone would talk about was uh, like dr drag queen um, story time getting banned. And I think it, for a while, you know, it's like where you get inundated and you're like, it's important to let people have freedom of speech and that sort of thing. But also now, because nobody's really at the public library now, because of that, you're not gonna see any stories about it for a while, but maybe next year we'll bring it back. Um, and they've um, backed off, a lot of publishers have backed off, like Macmillan backed off on a policy restricting ebook sales to libraries because right now they need to sell ebooks to libraries and to everyone. So they are not going to be dicks about it right now, right? Um, and then uh, privacy and cybersecurity, um, they talk about um, where the US is going to follow. And that's all pretty much I've been talking about lately is the fact that they're tracking us constantly and they're using new and exciting um, different ways to track you. So to be careful about that. Um, and then where was the last one? Um, access services in a time of coronavirus, um, digital homework app. That's a problem. Like some of the students don't have 
good internet at home. They don't have computers. They have too many people in their family and maybe one uh, digital device, but how do you get everyone in your household um, to be able to share and have equity. There are a lot of students that are going home to um, violence at the home. Um, they're starving. So a lot of schools are still trying to have lunches. They're, they're either bringing people in or um, doing deliveries so kids can at least still eat. So these are the things that people in education are agonizing about. Um, how to have equity for students to give people a fighting chance to have a good education in this time of coronavirus. And it is not easy, I tell you. But I will say it is a joy to get to work with um, great educators and smart people who are making it all work. Um, there's a, a site that I found called Pandemic Pedagogy on Facebook that has been a lifesaver. It's really helped me. And the humor that we all share in this time where Things can be pretty rough, but it's amazing to me how we are all making it work in such a short amount of time. And then, uh, let's see, last. I think that's about it. I think, um, yeah, that's about all. There's so much news. There's always, if you're looking for more, more than I can like even give you today, um, American Library Association, um, it's the, they have the intellectual freedom blog and that's from the office for intellectual freedom and the American library association. And every week they come up with great links to intellectual freedom resources all around the internet and all around the world. And it is so worth it. Um, and the thing that's interesting to me lately is um, seeing that some of the things we're going through is so similar all around the world. And we always feel people in the United States, I think, feel like, no, oh, th their situations are so different than ours. And, you know, when we all get sick the same way, and we all have to deal with changing lives and being quarantined and um, lack of supplies and the potential for having an internet die on us, because let me tell you, just the other day, my internet that went down for an hour in the middle of a Zoom meeting. So I was really glad tonight it didn't happen. But um, I promise you at least one night, we're not going to make it work. Um, yesterday I had um, with the sweet versives, we couldn't get our Zoom meeting to work for it. So we switched to a different one. So you just need to be flexible. You need to be open to change and um, I think doing a little bit of self-reflection every day and take time to breathe. If there's things that calm you that hell down, make sure you do a little bit of that in each day. It's worth it. Um, I, I like to just kind of meditate a little bit on the day and think about what I need to do. I try not to be too hard on myself. It's really easy to be too hard on yourself. And I know in, um, in this world, we, we got to work hard. We got to make these things happen, but I think we can, I think it's going to be okay. Um, I don't want to be Pollyanna about it, but you know, you take precautions, you do what you can, you be clean, you, you watch out for people and they watch out for you and, um, don't be a real awful person because then you just get shot or like somebody chases you down. You know, it's, you want to, you want to be good to people. So they hopefully are good back to you. And that's all. I mean, I, I hope we all make it out of this. I, mean, I, I, I honestly worry, but there's out of our control. And I had, um, I'll share this on my um, page, but there was a really awesome, uh, Lord of the Rings quote, and I shared it there. And it was, I'm going to see if I can find it. I posted some apocalyptic costume thing and it like exploded on my page because everyone wanted to show me their apocalypse costume. So I thought that was great. Okay, so here it is. Slow internet is slow. Here we go. There we go. Oh, that's Odin. Where did he go? Man. Okay, here we go. This is from Lord of the Rings. Um, it says Gandalf and Frodo were talking. He said, I wish it need not have happened in my time, said Frodo. So do I, said Gandalf. And so do all who live to see such times. But that is not for them to decide. 
All we have to decide is what to do with the time that is given us. So please decide well, choose well, choose wisely, take care of each other. And I will see you next week. And hopefully I will get a little bit more spunky from like being all caught up on getting ready for the semester to come back, but I'm sure we'll have lots to talk about. So please take care of yourself, stay healthy, and I will see you next week, my friends. So cheers. See you next week.